Hi, welcome to Atlassian Demos. Today you'll be seeing a demo for data-driven decisions for your team in Jira software. We hope you enjoy. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining me today. My name is Erica and I'm a product manager here at Atlassian. Today, I'm here to talk about the new insights features in Jira software that will supercharge your team's agile and DevOps practice with data. Now, I know everyone here understands the power of data. It's ingrained in everything we do. At work, we rely heavily on all kinds of data points, really, to make business decisions like the revenue, the product usage, the user retentions, and et cetera. And then at home, we track how well we're sleeping, how well we're exercising, or even eating to improve fitness and health. But how well are you applying the same level of diligence when it comes to improving your team's way of working? And I'm asking this because we've heard from so many of you over the years that as much as you like to use data to assess your team's current performance and identify what to do next to improve, this is not an easy task. And I mean, especially for the modern day engineering teams who are so busy every day, just shipping away. And there are several steps to take to get there. You have to firstly know exactly what to measure and also when to measure. And you need to be able to access the data that you want to gather, which can be quite cumbersome, to be honest, if the data is coming from multiple sources. And you also need to visualize the data in a way that anyone can look at it and understand the insights to be able to turn them into next best action items for the team. And since this shouldn't be a one-time exercise, you and your team needs to keep up with the discipline to continuously assess and improve. And the fact that there are so many mountains to climb, isn't that great given that Agile is all about continuously improving how you work together as a team. And you can't improve what you can't measure. So this is why we're bringing you the latest new feature, Insights in Jira Software. Insights bring key Agile and DevOps data points to where your team works without you having to take all of those aforementioned steps. So with Insights, you can just make an informed decision right in context where your team's working, and then decide if you want to have a meaningful discussion with your team as they become necessary. Now, as exciting as that sounds, I wanna let you guys know that these features are currently in beta. And we're in the process of rolling this out to everyone and we're very actively building out more pieces as we go based on your feedback. And so I hope this demo gets you excited to see, see these features appear in your JIRA in the next few months. And so you can try them out and share your thoughts. So let's get started. For today, I'm gonna walk through how you can use the insights in JIRA software whether it's in the backlog view for smart sprint planning, or if it's on the board for when you're checking your team's progress during a daily scrum meeting, or on the deployments view for when you're checking your team's velocity and frequency and delivery, which is quite important. So let's get started in this backlog view that I'm sure you are all very familiar with. Imagine you and your team are in sprint planning meeting, ready to set those goals to crush, deciding which work to prioritize, and then discussing how much to take on. As you can see in this backlog view, you've already got a few high priority bugs in the sprint that you capture from this week's triage, um, and um, you know you need to tackle this sprint, but what else does your team need to work on? This is a great moment to click the insights button right here, which will open up this panel. And inside the panel, you see two cards. First one indicating that there are 12 points assigned to the sprint, as you see from the bugs that you've added. And the total amount um, in the sprint is below the target of the range of 54 to 65 points. 
And on the second card, you see that um, it displays the workload by different issue types in the sprint. And it says that the majority of the sprints issues are bugs and that you can see in the backlog as well. And as you can tell by now, Insights in the Backlog is designed to help you plan your sprint by recommending how much should be added to the sprint and also displaying the different types of work that's currently added to the sprint. So let's take a closer look at how this can be used in action. So when you click the sprint commitment card, it opens up displaying a chart showing your team sprint completion trend in the past four sprints. And up close, you can see that the chart is actually displaying both the amount committed in black gray and also the amount completed in dark gray. And the target range listed here is actually the average amount your team was able to complete in the past sprints. So it's easy for you to just compare it to how much you want to assign to this sprint. Looking at it here, you have total committed amount is much less than the recommended target, which makes sense. You haven't added much to the sprint yet. So let's go ahead and add more issues. Now, based on the recommended range, your team decides to pull in the top four team most important issues in the sprint, which moves up the total to 60 points and it's within range and you got the green check mark, yay. Now, we don't expect that every team will follow exactly the target recommendation here. Um, if anything, you probably shouldn't. This data is here to guide your team's discussion. So for example, maybe for the next sprint, some of your team members will be on leave or maybe it's gonna be the holiday season. So your team will be at a lower capacity than usual. So in this case, your team can take this data as a reference and just discuss with your team what the new target should be based on your new capacity level. And over time, as you do this exercise with your team for every sprint, you'll find that these little moments of discussion can really help your team establish a more predictable and reliable velocity, which is what everyone wants, right? And while we're here, let's quickly look at the next card as well. Opening it up, you'll see that the focus of the sprint is now the story issue type. Of course, you have some bugs in there and tech debts and tasks as well. And this is a really good way to watch out for when your team is taking on maybe too many bugs or too many tech debts instead of delivering customer value. And this could really indicate a need for a tech debt lead or just overall improvements in quality. So with Sprint Insights in your backlog, you see that you can now start your sprint with confidence that knowing that you have data backing up the decisions that you've made as a team. Moving onto the board, let's say it's been over a week since the sprint has kicked off. Your team is in a daily scrum meeting and everyone is joining in the Zoom because you know, that's the reality we live in today and you're sharing the board on the screen to go through what everyone is up to. And you see there again, insights. This time you see different cards, one about sprint progress and another one on sprint burn down. And it seems like there are four days remaining in the sprint and yet only 30% of the work has been completed. And the burned out insight also suggests heads up. So let's click in to see what that means. Opening up both cards, you see that sprint burn down is suggesting some serious scope creep. This is a great point to discuss with, you, with your team what's happening here. And you realize that some of the work weren't well defined ahead of the sprint so that the team and the PMs like had to break it down farther and add more stories in the middle of the sprint. And to make things worse, you know that some of the team members had been taking sick leaves. Uh, so this time the team wasn't um, making a fast progress as they would usually. This isn't an ideal scenario, but it's great that you're reviewing this data. So it gives you the opportunity to look at team priorities together and see if some of the issues can be removed so the team can focus on what matters the most for the sprint. So you decide to drop a big chunk of work and just 
chose the most important one in the sprint to be completed. And you can see on this chart that now the team is back on track. Yes, it's unfortunate what's happened in the sprint, but what matters is that the team was closely watching the progress and the scope creep and responding quickly to changes. Now, moving on to the new deployments view, which is designed to help you see the latest deployment information of issues. And if you've never seen this feature before, that means you need to enable it by integrating your Jira software with your CI CD provider. And I really highly recommend you do so, so you'll never have to answer the question of, has this shipped yet? And if you want to learn more about this feature overall, and also other Atlassian DevOps offering, then head over to my amazing colleague Garrett's talk in Atlassian Open DevOps. He'll tell you all about how connecting Jira software to your development tools can unlock a whole wide range of new capabilities for your team. But back to the deployments view for now. So again, this is where you go to check the latest deployment status of your issues. And here, clicking insights display deployment frequency and cycle time, the two of the most sought after DevOps metrics to measure your team's proficiency. So let's start with the deployment frequency insight. This metric will tell you how often your team is deploying code to production. As you can see here, we've done about nine deployments yesterday. And in the past four weeks, the team has been making an average of eight deployments a day. So we are trending upward. And deploying more often means that you're shipping in smaller chunks more often giving your teams opportunities to get feedback and iterate um, on your software. So companies like Amazon or Netflix are deploying hundreds and thousands of times a day. So you know that this is a very important metric to watch closely and review with your team. Next up is cycle time insight. Some of you might be familiar with the cycle time metric already. Maybe you've been measuring it uh, from the moment an issue has moved to in progress to getting it done. But sometimes this way of calculating cycle time might not accurately represent the time work takes to complete because this whole thing really heavily relies on how diligently your engineers are updating the status of issues. And again, like we know how busy all the engineers are. So instead, in the deployments view, we measure cycle time from the first commit to a production deployment. And by doing so, we're accurately capturing the time spent in development and deployment. So here we see that cycle time is trending upward and over the median value. And that's not so great. Why is it taking so long? And you want to know what's happening. So you see like, this snapshot of insights, it's great in bringing data points into context so you get the real-time alert. But it's not enough for you to dig deeper into what's really going on. And this is why for most of the insights we're introducing, they will come with reports for farther investigation. As an example, as you can see here, we've introduced the cycle time trend report to help you dig deeper into signals and um, understand more about what you can do next. So here you see the weekly comparison of cycle time where you can easily identify which weeks has longer cycle time than others, but mostly we're here to understand why. So let's scroll down to dig deeper into the table to see what's going on, which is conveniently ordered by longest cycle time first to get more information about the problematic issues. And so this view focuses on the problematic week of March 22nd. And um, on the graph on top, you can quickly see which issues are the outliers and have the longest cycle times. They're over the median line. And digging into issues with the longest cycle time in the table, um, you see here top three, very long cycle time. And actually one of them have really long PR time of 58 hours, which is two PRs. 
And so it's a good time to discuss with your engineers what's been happening here. Apparently in retro, like it was already identified that uh, the PRs in general needs to be broken down into smaller pieces. And apparently the middle one, the one with a long review time, turns out those PRs were raised to another dependent team's repo. So the problem here was a bit out of your team's control, but you take it as an action to work with that team to help prioritize these issues and the pull requests. Diagnosing the issues and having them ironed out with your team, you're back on a deployments view, and look, the cycle time is below the median and now back on track. Yay! So I hope it's really clear to you by now that Insights in Jira software is designed to help your team continuously improve whether it's on the board or backlog or the deployments view, it only takes your team just a few seconds to open up insights and take a look at how your team is doing right now and discuss together if further discussion is necessary. And now I've walked you through all the insights experience we have so far, but there is so much more to come. As I mentioned, these features are only in beta today and should be making their way to you quite soon, which means that there cannot be a better time for you to give us feedbacks about what you like to see. There are so many more Agile and DevOps insights to be introduced. So as you try them with your team, please share your thoughts with us. And like I said, these insights will come with um, partner reports to help you better understand um, what's behind the question of why. And this means uh, reports will help you dive deeper into the data and diagnose the problem in depth. So that's gonna be very helpful if you and your team want to come up with a solid improvement plan. So thanks everyone for joining me today. It's been really great to finally talk about what we've been working on. And I hope you are all excited to uh, try this out for yourself and let us know what you think. And feel free to check out the Jira Guide and Agile Coach pages to learn more about how you and your team can be more agile in your ways of working. And that's all for today, folks. Feel free to reach out to me. I'm, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Alassian Community, and I read your feedbacks every day. So I really look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.